think this fence is asking for it to be my next project, don't you? So thanks so much for all the amazing comments and vote of confidence in my last video on my patio. But today, I'm actually, it's given me a lot more confidence to crack on with the next job. I live on a main road and that is to completely change and replace the whole fencing between me and the neighbours and most of the panels are completely rotten and the posts are very wobbly so to start off with I'm just going to rip out the first few and then we'll take it from there So just like my patio project, I ordered everything from Buildland because it was much cheaper. They're the same company as Darlston and this included delivery and they just craned it over onto my front garden. And I planned on using concrete posts, concrete gravel boards with wooden fence panels and mixing gravel with post mix. And I'm really not the best person to ask for help and this definitely is a two man job. So here's me slowly struggling to bring all the fence panels towards the side of the house but once my fiance got home he helped me with the concrete posts and gravel boards because there were no shifting those on my own. And the fence panels only came in one colour so I got out my Wagner fence and decking sprayer to completely stain all seven fence panels in a red cedar. And not only did I want to do that now to change the colour, I wanted to make sure I didn't have to stain this for quite a long time. So using one of the very old fence panels, I set the sprayer up, made sure I used a proper mask, I'll leave all the links for things below, and just use that panel as my first test to get an idea of how close I needed to be to it to get the coverage I wanted. And once I was happy, I moved on to the bad boys. And I just leaned it up against the old fencing that we hadn't taken down yet, that way it could block any sprays in unwanted places. And I found I needed to give this about two or three coats, but I did use the cheapest stain that I could find in wicks, so it might have paid me to get a better quality one. And of course made sure both sides were completely coated. So after leaving those to dry, it was time to start removing the original fence posts towards the back of the house. And to start off with, we used a hammer drill for this just to see how things went. Yes. It's not quite 600 deep either. So we need to go a bit deeper. And once we'd removed all the posts, I needed to set up my plumb line. So I measured the width of the concrete posts because they were wider than the original wooden posts and marked out the difference where the original post was. Conveniently, it left a mark behind so I knew where it used to be. And then I hammered a nail in and tied some string round it and went all the way to the bottom of the garden, trapped between both of our garages and tied it to a metal spike and dug it in the ground. So once we'd done that, it was time to start removing any concrete that was originally supporting the old posts. I really underestimated how much concrete was under there. So I found the best way to do this was alternating it with a trench shovel and just getting down there and removing big bits by hand wearing gloves. And to see if I dug deep enough, I made a measure mark on a really old piece of wood and just stuck it in the ground and just used that for every post. And instead of digging holes that were three widths of the concrete posts, my dad recommended about a two inch gap all the way around. He's been doing sheds and fencing for well over 40 years. And then I chucked in roughly about 20 kilograms of the gravel straight into my wheelbarrow and then poured in one whole bag of post mix and just dry mixed that together in the barrow. So I left that to one side for a minute while we focused on lining up the fence posts. And I know a lot of people space out their posts by using a cut piece of wood to the same width of their panel, but we just use the gravel boards and just roughly place them where they should be. It just saved a lot of lifting later on. And now we were ready to start setting in the first post. And the first thing I would do was chuck a couple of pints of water into the hole while the post was in place and chuck in a couple of shovel loads of my dry concrete mixture. Then I tampered down with an old scrap piece of wood just to knock any air out and bring the water to the top and then keep shoveling in more mixture. And although you can't see it, my fiance was holding it in place with a spirit level while I was focusing on shoveling it all in. But I really like this method my dad suggested because it's set within about four to five minutes and I continued shoveling the cement mixture until we got flush with the surface of the ground. So once that was secure, we made sure we worked on the second post but I found it really hard to make sure the whole back area was level using another piece of string because it's all on a hill and slopes towards the garage. And again, we lined the concrete post to the plumb line and used a spirit level. 
and then filled our second hole with the gravel and post mixture. And notice while that was setting, we had the gravel boards jammed into place. And then it was time to put our first fence panel in. And we only had one step ladder, so I helped guide it through while I was at ground level. And this is when it started to feel like it took shape. And before we started craning up the gravel boards and putting packers underneath to make sure everything was level, we just focused on the rest of the posts. And at this point we realised it would be so much quicker if we got a concrete breaker. And I tried to take some of your advice by calling places to hire one for a Saturday to get a one day price, but everyone wanted to charge me the whole weekend rate. So instead I just went to JTF's wholesale warehouse and bought one for 120 quid. And it really sped up the whole concrete process. I did very carefully chip away and I wore goggles and ear defenders because it was pretty loud and this was my first time using one, which is so exciting to say. And once our slope garden reached to its highest point, I then balanced a long piece of wood to the same width of each post in situ and checked to see if it was straight using a spirit level. It needs to be up about an inch. And once we got it right, we checked to see if the post was straight again and carried on until we got to the final fence instalment. So I don't know if you can hear me because it's very windy, but that is it for this project. And I have to say, it was much harder than doing the patio on my own because there were lots of heavy lifting because the concrete posts and gravel boards you can't lift on your own. There's a lot of concrete underneath and you don't really know what you're going to deal with until you get there. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. And now I'm just going to lever some of the gravel boards up, wedge them to make sure they're definitely in line with each other and cement the, uh, the grooves underneath. So hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!